Hello, my name is Aristellus Toribio, DocuWare educator, and I'll be showing you how to utilize the main features of DocuWare. With just the basics, you'll be able to successfully start using your DocuWare system. Let's jump into it with our DocuWare demonstration. Here you can see the DocuWare web client. It is fully browser-based, so you don't need to install any software on your local PC to work with it. You would simply obtain your DocuWare URL, and you can log in from anywhere, whether you're at your home office or on a business trip. I'm logged in here as Peggy Jenkins, and Peggy is an employee at our sample company. You can see here we only have six functions that are available to you, and this is because we've been working for over 30 years to bring you a clean and intuitive interface. We land first in our document tray, which is your digital workspace, where all documents ready for processing will land once they are imported into DocuWare. We're currently in Peggy's document tray, and we can double click on an invoice to have it displayed for viewing on the right hand side. Functionality such as scrolling through the document pages or zooming in, and, zooming in and out of your documents is available here. You may be wondering how we can get documents into a document tray for processing. Well, we have several functions that you can choose from. On one hand, you can use the import function to import documents from your file system directly to your document tray. Another method is the scan function right next to it. If you have paper-based documents, you can connect the scanner and start digitizing your documents this way. The third option is very important, emails. The flow of emails has to also be controlled. So for this, we can have emails stored directly from Outlook so that you can access those documents from there. However, before any of this can work, we do have to install the DocuWare desktop apps locally, and we'll go over how to do that now. We'll go to the main menu and select desktop apps. And then we'll go to select the option to install the desktop apps. Now, once they are installed, the next step would be to connect to your desktop apps. Once this is done successfully, all functions will be available to you and you can start processing documents into your document tray. Another function to use in the document tray is the view function. Right now, I currently have a thumbnail view set up, but if maybe I had a lot of documents sitting in my document tray, I can change that to a table view. The next function is sorting. You have sort options, so you can pre-sort your documents in your document tray and prepare them for storing. We will now go from processing a document in the document tray to storing the document to a file cabinet. You can see in this case, I have some documents here, such as an invoice from US Steel. I can actually select several documents at a time for bulk storage, but in this case, we're just going to select the one. When clicking on the store button, we can see there are several file cabinets here, such as the accounting file cabinet with the accounts payable dialog. Let's see another method to achieve the same result. I can change my view so that the file cabinets are now listed in the middle, same, di same dialogues and same file cabinets. And what I can do now is select my invoice and move it into my accounting file cabinet. You can see now on the left-hand side, the indexing dialog has opened up. And in this case, all necessary data for the incoming invoice has been assigned to necessary fields, such as the company name, the invoice number, or the invoice date. In this case, I wanna verify that the company name is correct and uniform to the way that we are storing it in our DocuWare system. For this, I can choose a select list and choose the company name US Steel. Now to verify the invoice number from the document, I can actually use one-click indexing. So what I can do is using one-click indexing, we'll go to the document on the right-hand side, find the invoice number, and then using one-click indexing, select that information, and you can see it was already transferred into our index field, easily and conveniently. Now that we verified that information, we can store the document. You can see we received some uh, feedback letting us know that the document has been stored successfully, and you can notice the document is no longer in our document tray, as it has been moved to the file cabinet. Now that the document has been stored, 
I would like to pull up this invoice again quickly and easily. For this, we move from the document trays onto the search. With the search button, I get a drop down menu with several search dialogues. And because I'm looking for invoices, I'm going to choose the corresponding search, invoice search. The dialog can be a little extensive as we can see, but you don't need to fill in all of the fields, just the most important ones. When performing a search, the more search terms you combine, the more precise your search results will be. You can also search using date ranges so that calling up invoices for a complete fiscal year is also possible. A nice way to freely search is by using the full text search, which we can see here. In the full text field, it is possible to search for a keyword that exists on the document itself. Let's say I forgot the company of the invoice or the invoice number, but I know the type of invoice I'm looking for included a type of bolt. Then this word is enough for me to begin an open search using the full text field to find the invoice. When I search against the word bolt, I get the results list back and I can see here two invoices are displayed. And the great advantage of full text search is that it highlights my search term on the document. So I can always see here, yes, this was the, the value that I searched and here it is on my document. Now using the search dialog is just one method to searching in a file cabinet. Another option would be to search via the folder structure. For this, we go into the folders tab. You can see here we have several folder structures to pick from, and I'm going to choose specifically accounts payable by year. We are looking for an invoice from 2022, which leads us to the month of December, where we click through to the third level and end up at the company name US Steel. And we can see that it is the same invoice that we were just working with earlier. So everything is available to you. Whether you choose the search dialog or the folder structure, the same, op um, same documents will be displayed just through a different search option. If we want to work with the document itself in the same way you're used to doing on paper, such as applying stamps or notes, we can do this via the toolbar. With just one click, I can display the several ways to edit the document. Very essential to this are the annotations options, such as adding a text box or highlighting values. These annotations are added on an overlay of the document as the original document itself remains unaffected. Using this button here, we can show or hide the overlay at any time. Going a step further, we also have tools available to use here. From here, I can choose to send the document at any time. And the nice thing is we can choose whether we want to include the annotation overlay on the document when sending or not. Or if we choose to send without annotations, then the third party will receive the document without the annotations overlay. If we choose PDF with all annotations, that means we're sending the document with our additional comments on it to external parties. If you're thinking that your toolbar might look different or is missing certain functionalities, I'm going to explain why this could be. Let's go to our main menu dropdown and click on Profile and Settings. You can see here your profile and settings where we can edit our personal data amongst other things. On this tab, you simply see the first name, last name, email address, salutation information, making it easy and convenient for you to change your personal information at any time. Let's move on to the security tab. Here, of course, you can always change or update your password whenever needed. In the document trays tab, if you're ever wondering if you have access to a document tray or not, then you can take a look in here and you can always see what document trays are available to you. You can also use the I function to show or hide the document tray at any time. So if you say, I don't really need this particular document tray because you don't work with it so often, then you can simply deactivate it here. And of course, at any time, you can always activate it again. The same concept applies to our search tab, where I can deactivate or activate search dialogs and of course, change listing order. Let's move on to the viewer tab. Here, you can adjust your toolbar. Using the same concept, you can show 
or hide certain options or individual tools. For example, under the display, I can see here I have the option to uh, rotate the page left for viewing. But if I know that I don't usually use this tool and I never really have to do this function, then I can simply deactivate or hide that tool. And you can do this for any tool. Simply hide the functionalities that you do not use and keep the ones that you work with every day. Also in this tab, you have viewer options. The first option is how we have been working together today with the viewer on the right hand side of the screen. If for some reason, let's say you work with two screens perhaps, and you would like to see the entire document on one screen, then simply select the option to have the document viewer open in a new window. There are also, this is also an option that you can change at any time. The important thing to remember is that the changes you make here only affect your workspace. So that means every other colleague will not be affected and every colleague sets their own preferences. Well, viewers, as you can see, it's very easy and intuitive to use the DocuWare web client. Not only that, but newcomers can get started immediately and be productive right from the start. If you want to learn more about DocuWare, check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you'll find other exciting webinars like this one. Thank you very much for your attention and make sure to leave a comment or a like if you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.